There is an interesting old building in the old district of Kharkiv called Zaykivka. This is the building of one of the first fire departments with a fire tower. In March 2022, during the full-scale invasion of the Russian Federation into Ukraine, the building was hit by two barbaric attacks, a bomb and a missile, as a result of which it was seriously damaged. Ruined roof, internal walls, partially facade. In the second half of the 19th century, Kharkiv already had the status of the main trade, cultural and industrial center of Slobozhanshchina. It had more than 70 enterprises and factories. However, many buildings and structures at that time were wooden, and fires posed a serious danger to the city. Then the city authorities decided to build a fire station with a high tower. The land for construction was donated to the city by Andriy Valerianovich Kvitka, a representative of the richest Kvitka family, great-nephew of Hrihori Kvitka Oznovyanenko, a famous Kharkiv writer. The outstanding playwright Kvitka Oznovyanenko also belongs to the Kvitka family, matching on Honcharivka. Shelmenko Denshchik and others, when Lieutenant Colonel Andriy Valerianovich Kvitka sold off his land, he gave one part free of charge to the people of Kharkiv. And from 1884 to 1887, the building of the new fire department was erected in the neo-Gothic style with a high tower. For several decades, it remained one of the tallest buildings in Kharkiv. Nearby was a depot for fire engines and crews. Later, the tower lost its direct purpose, but throughout its history, it served the firefighters well. Before the arrival of the rocket, the building first belonged to the Fire and Rescue Unit, then to the Research and Testing Laboratory, which investigated the causes of fires and their consequences. In mid-March, the first bomb hit as a result of a Russian airstrike. She did not fall into the building, but into the ground. As a result of the shockwave, we got the following result. At two o'clock in the morning, my sister was still awake. She was standing by the stove and the first explosion occurred. A Russian bomb hit the road and destroyed my house. We were scared. My sister has hypertension. She was very scared. Incredible impressions. It was very scary. It turned out that it was terrible the second time. The house did not collapse, but the roof was half blown off. The windows were blown out. Not from the outside, but from the inside. I woke up. The ringing in my ears was terrible. I even thought that I had a concussion. It is not clear what is happening outside the window. I understood that the flight was next to our house or in the house itself. It all collapsed at once and you need to understand how to get to the child when he cries in the dark. He clung to me, grabbed me so that I could not tear him away and he was shaking a lot. I looked at the crub and it was all melted because burning fragments were flying around our house. I was already happy because at least one child is alive. I just can't survive that night.
At the end of March, there was a second shelling, hitting almost in the same place, but several meters closer. The shock wave was a little stronger. The entire personnel was in the subdivision. The guards were on duty. They heard an air alarm. Sounds of aviation began to descend into shelter. An explosion rang out, as a result of which two of our colleagues were injured. The hit was almost in the same funnel. These funnels, they coincided. How exactly they hit? One funnel was three meters deep and ten meters wide, and another, they overlapped. So, the difference between the funnels is five meters. Based on the fact that the enemy used high-precision weapons, he intended to aim at our service. Twice. It was supposed to neutralize us, although we eliminate fires. The consequences of accidents, natural disasters and similar disasters. Apparently, the enemy wanted us to not be able to fulfill our duties, to provide assistance to the people of Kharkiv. This building has had the status of an architectural monument for a long time. It is included in excursion routes and tourists were regular guests here. Today, the monument is registered in the Register of Cultural and Historical Buildings of Kharkiv under number 483. The firefighters of Rescue Unit number 4 respectfully and carefully exploited their value, maintained the building properly. The premises were used as an administrative building. We knew that this was a historical monument. Many residents of the city came here on excursions. So the building was always kept in good condition. That is, its historical value has been preserved. Damage to it is an attack on our cultural heritage, which we value, respect, and try to preserve for future generations. It's a pity that everything is destroyed today, but we hope that both the fire station and the premises, which also belong to the architectural complex, will be restored. This attack on the city's cultural heritage is certainly a crime, and the persons involved in the crime are subject to criminal liability. In the course of Russian aggression, the destruction of Ukrainian cultural monuments has a systemic nature. In addition, harm is caused to the lives and health of peaceful people. On the 27th, exactly two weeks later, the blow was even stronger. And after that, the sister got so scared that her blood pressure was 190 all the time. After that, she got so sick that she died in August, because her pressure was very high that it couldn't be lowered. Local residents are suffering. There is a house inside we have. Everything has collapsed there. That guy doesn't do anything. My grandson Amir, it's been two years, but he still urinates. We couldn't put him to sleep for three months. He fell asleep dressed. 
We said, Amir chick, let's take off your socks. And he answered, Grandma, I can't go to sleep. I will guard you. Because at night, witch will come with long arms, break the windows, and drag us all out. Apparently, he put all this aside for a long time because he still wakes up at night, throws tantrums, cries, and his nose begins to bleed. I have a video from my sister. It was at 6 a.m. after the explosion. My house. It was once. House. House. And school. My house. My yard, my school. Here I was sitting on the couch, and I don't know how I didn't get punched through and through. Ruski Mir. Ruski Mir, my home. Ruski Mir in my house. After downloading the video, she said, This is Azov hitting you, yours. I'm like, do you know what you're talking about? I have a fragment of a rocket with a serial number. We googled with my son. He said that it was a Russian-made Iskander missile. This is the wreckage of the Russian Iskander. They wanted to take it away from me, the military prosecutor's office, the city prosecutor's office. The sappers wanted to take it away, but I said that it will remain a reminder of the events that are taking place today. I say, if necessary, I will give it to the tribunal in The Hague. Although there is enough evidence, it is like a souvenir. The number can be read in its entirety. I gave all the remains to the experts. I had two buckets of debris. He distributed everything. And I left it because there is a school across from me. God willing, the war will end with our victory. Let's make a small museum. The traces left by the Russians on our land are indisputable evidence of their barbaric crimes, each of which we believe will be punished. There is no such punishment that could be invented for Putin. He deserves the harshest punishment for the actions he commits here in Ukraine. And there is no forgiveness for him, and no negotiations can be conducted with him. He must be judged and execute. For every war crime committed against Ukraine, there must be a fair retribution. 